I'm Matt Smith right now on Upfront. Securing Wisconsin schools, our new investigation, taking you inside new security changes underway, the statewide and nationwide concerns and problems exposed, and what lawmakers are doing. Then growing concerns in Congress, sexual assault, abuse, and suicide in the military. A longtime top military official from Wisconsin on what's being done in her role on a nationwide task force. Then Wisconsin's election results just days from certification. The new autopsy from top Republicans already looking to 2024. And a decades-long career, State Senator Alberta Darley now just days from retirement. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great Thanksgiving weekend. We begin inside Wisconsin schools this weekend, a plea by some to state and federal lawmakers. Our national investigative unit asked every public school district here in Wisconsin and in all 50 states what steps they're taking right now to keep kids safe. Chief National Investigative Correspondent Mark Elbert leading us off on securing our schools. When Ty Brightlow walks in the room, his students cheer. There's the bell. It's those children, the new leader of Lomira Schools, an hour north of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, is trying to protect with new safety initiatives now underway. New locks being installed on the inside of classroom doors, not just the outside. There's an active shooter. A crisis app connected to law enforcement in case of emergency. So I can get resources rolling as fast as possible to save lives. Minutes matter. Minutes always matter. Seconds matter. In security improvements to the front lobby. Safety is our first priority. Every school leader in America is now having to think about safety and security. But few leaders, I would say, have the personal experience with a school shooting that you do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> December 1st, 1993. Oh, On that day, a former student shot and killed his father, Dale Brightlow, the associate principal of Wauwatosa West High School. Ty was across the street at the middle school. He was 12. How does your dad's death in a school shooting now inform and influence how you approach school safety as the leader of a district? I think the, 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 the number one piece that helps to inform me is that it could have been prevented. In fact, the U.S. Secret Service has concluded the overwhelming majority of targeted school violence is preventable. So, in a nationwide exclusive, the National Investigative Unit asked every public school district in every state, more than 13,000, what they're doing to prevent school shootings and keep kids and staff safe. Of those who responded, one out of every three do not have a district police department or school resource officer. Nearly one in five told us they have not been briefed by their local law enforcement on an active shooter response plan this year. And more than a quarter of districts acknowledged not every staff member knows what the plan is, with 13% of districts still not planning to tell them this year. Preparedness is, is critical. Administrator Brightlow is one of the leaders nationwide who responded. When you first got our questionnaire, what did you think? It's about time. We also asked about guns in schools. More than one in 10 districts who responded to our questionnaire allows teachers or staff to carry loaded firearms, sometimes referred to as a guardian program. We call them guardians, but they're more or less defenders. We don't ask them to leave their students. All guardians uh, candidates must complete a 144 hour training program. We do not have a local police department in this little town of 342 people. And that decision was made uh, this June. In rural southern Missouri, response times prompted action just a month after a shooting at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas, killed 21 people. We believe we could have someone to uh, any location, any classroom in our district uh, in under a minute. In Broward County, Florida, where a judge this month sentenced a former student to life in prison for killing 17 people in Parkland, Weapons and other prohibited items like this blue stun device, vaping devices, and even brass knuckles are being found, the district says, as part of its new randomized hand winding program. This is video shot by the district exclusively for this story to maintain student privacy. The first time it's wanding of high school and middle school students has been seen publicly. Are your schools safer with this program? 
I believe that they are safer with this program in place because they don't want to be caught with it. In securing our schools is why Ty Brightlow now has in his district closet an hour north of Milwaukee what his father, killed by a school shooter in 1993, did not, a bullet-resistant vest. White, in case the dark comes and a Brightlow has to confront it once again. Do you think you're going to have to use this? No, I do not believe I will in my lifetime. But I will if I have to. In Lamira, Wisconsin, I'm Chief National Investigative Correspondent Mark Albert. Chief Investigative Correspondent Mark Albert joins us now. Hey, Mark, good to see you. Hey, Matt, thanks. This was quite an expansive survey and investigation you guys conducted. I'm curious your key takeaways and the big picture that you took away from all this research. Sure, we actually found two distinct patterns, I would say. The first is that many districts acknowledge that they are falling short on safety. The reasons are complex, everything from money to community will to political will. Uh, but clearly that is a theme that came through in those results. Some of them just don't have enough resources to fix the problem. That we found is having a clear impact on security in some school districts in America. The second takeaway though that we found is that uh, districts are being really proactive about safety in some areas. So for example, they're being creative, they're launching new initiatives, they're not resting on their laurels, they're always looking at how to improve, they're not looking at safety and security as a set barometer. In other words, if we do X, Y, and Z, we're safe, we're secure. What I was struck by is that many districts are looking at this much as they look at cybersecurity. It's a never ending battle. It's always evolving and they're trying to evolve with it. Mark, this is just launching your Securing Our Schools series. What areas are you gonna be looking at in the coming weeks and, and months, both here in Wisconsin and nationally? You bet. So we were so grateful for all the districts that responded to our questionnaire, and they really gave us quite a lot of content to explore. So first of all, the next piece, we're going to be looking at the cost of some of these safety and security measures. We already talked, Matt, about how some districts feel abandoned. They don't feel that they have the finances they need to make their campuses secure. So we're going to be looking at that. In Wisconsin, as a matter of fact, on Election Day this month, Eight school districts in Wisconsin asked voters for more money, either in whole or in part, for safety and security, and all eight were approved on Election Day. So certainly that is important for those uh, districts for security needs. And in fact, we're going to be profiling one of those districts in our next piece. We're also going to be looking at some of the struggles that school districts say they're having in providing enough mental health resources for their students. As you saw in that piece a, a few minutes ago, the Secret Service says that most targeted school violence is preventable. And so some districts told us they are aware that they need to be, uh, be providing more of those mental health resources. And finally, we're gonna be looking at groups that offer school security training. We found that this is really a building private enterprise. Some are for-profit, some are non-profit. So we want to know where are they getting their funds from, who's backing them, are they profit, non-profit, uh, and is this training that they're providing these districts, that they're selling these districts, or in some cases giving away from free, is it actually helping to secure our schools? Everything you just talked about, do you think this will get the attention of lawmakers both at the state and federal level, and are there some administrators pleading with lawmakers, whether it be funding or different sources of help? Great question. So we are tracking that. We've already asked the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Education for comment about our story and about what our questionnaire found. We are reaching out to the key lawmaking committees to find out is there legislation that could help here or perhaps funding. Uh, it's, a, it's a hot topic uh, whether taxes should be going more to this uh, area. Uh, and then as far as what we're going to be doing, we're going to be tracking to make sure that some of these districts are falling through with what they said they are going to be doing. And for those districts that told us they are falling short, they know they're falling short, they're trying to do better, are they actually getting better? And so we are committed for the next couple of months going into next year to trying to find out, are these districts across America and in Wisconsin keeping our kids and our staff safe? It's a key, key question. An eye-opening investigation both here across the state of Wisconsin and nationally. Chief Investigative Correspondent Mark Elbert. Hey, Mark, thanks for your time. Thanks, man. Coming up, new concerns in Congress, the hearing on Capitol Hill targeting sexual abuse in the military, and the Wisconsin native and retired Major General on the front lines addressing the issue.